with JP. It is Tuesday, September 10, and uh, I want to welcome JP. This is a, a new phase in my communications with JP because now we are beginning a process where he is going to be coming out and we're going to start off with him um, very shortly at the Galactic Spiritual Informers Connection where he comes out on stage with a helmet and uh, this is the helmet he'll be well, uh, wearing. So welcome, JP. How you doing, Doc? It's a pleasure to be here. Also to bring you more information and more details of what is to come and what's going to happen in the future. Well, thank you. Yes, well, we need to first of all uh, let people know that um, as of August 30, uh, 2024, JP uh, is no longer serving with the U.S. Army. He was given an honorable discharge and uh, he is now a actually a retiree with the permanent with a permanent disability as a result of his experiences in these covert operations. So JP, you want to explain anything about the kind of injuries you suffered and why that kind of led to you um, being given this honorable discharge? Yeah, I can explain a little bit about that. Uh, they found something with, you know, the heart and some other things that later on I can get into. You know, it happens uh, when you're a paratrooper and when you are, I guess, part of the military, you know, we get a lot of these vaccination that sometimes is not good, you know, for your body. And, but you still have to take it because, you know, some of these things that they give you, you have to take it because depending where you go around the world, you know, you can get sick or something can happen to you that you don't want to happen. So certain things you have to do, there's a risk, but there's also another risk, you know? Right. And of course, in your covert missions, I mean, you are being exposed to different electromagnetic fields, different gravitational fields, uh, frequencies, densities, and they take a, a heavy toll on the body. You, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, also, you know, when you go into these different places, yeah, your body gets in touch with different types of radiation in your body. You get in touch with different elements that people don't understand how it works or what can how can it affect your your body also as well also going through different like um frequencies that takes you to other places also that can affect your body in a certain way um your heart it can affect your eyes it can affect your the way you think sometimes um, also the way you eat also in these certain places and your food is digested could be different because of the realm you're in, you know, so there's a lot of things that your body can get affected in different ways on these certain missions and they understand that and they totally know um, they gain a benefit, but there's also a, a down on these certain missions on your body deterioration. You know, you, we have a physical body, but we also have a spiritual body uh, that can also um, be affected in, in different ways. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, for people that want to find out more about uh, the circumstances uh, that led to JP being given his honourable discharge, you can actually read about it now in the final chapter of the new book. That's another announcement we're making, that there is a new book now on JP. It's called U.S. Army Insider Missions 3. So it's the third in this new series 
on JP. So now this book has just come out uh, as of uh, yesterday, actually, uh, September 8. And so that is now available. And in there, people can see some of the documents that were released uh, concerning JP's uh, service in the Army um, and also other kind of uh, work for other organisations such as the Navy, the Marines. And you can see those documents. They're, they're redacted, of course, that because JP is still going to maintain his anonymity because we're not quite sure exactly what is going to unfold uh, in terms of whether JP maybe just, well, uh, you, you want to talk a little bit about that, what you think yeah, may uh, in the future? Once, once, once you're connected to these different types of projects, right, once you're connected to these certain types of mission, it's like a, a, a one way in and no way out type of deal, you know, it's, it's hard to explain because um, not a lot of people go through these certain experience. So there's other third party, you know, companies that would approach you and because they know you went through these certain experiences and they know what you know, what to expect, they offer you certain kind of jobs and offer you uh, opportunity to work with them and do other types of missions that third party are um, hired from the government or other governments around the world. And there's something that happened really interesting. If you, yeah, if you want to get into it right okay. now, Doc. Uh, sure. Yeah. Let, let's, let's get into it then. So why don't you um, tell us about this uh, experience or this uh, update that you want to give us? So we went to the VA. I went to the VA. And this VA is close to that particular base where I took you. Uh, it's like, what, four minutes away from it? And I went in. You know, everything looked normal. I went to the waiting area. And, you know, you have to sign your name in, you know, like a regular VA place. But I noticed, I noticed a lot of different people there. A lot of older people, like maybe 70 or 80 year old, you know, people and also um, people my age as well. And then also mid age people, um, they were being called to the back and it was like one by one. Like if we were all there for the same reason. So it was really, really timed um, this appointment that they told me to be there. They told me to be there, what, 30 minutes prior to sign some paperwork. You know, it was my first time there. I got my new um, ID in the deer's office in the base. And, you know, it's a retirement ID. So they started calling all these people. They called a guy. I sat right next to him. He was like 80, probably like 82 years old. He had a truck, trucker hat. He had a cane. And then he looks at me. And he says, are you going to vote for Trump? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to get into that now um, inside the VA. He's like, you better vote for Trump. And I'm like, ah, let's see what happens. Let's see whatever, you know. So he kept talking to me. He says, he's like, are you here for a, a, another reason? And I'm like, well, what reason you're talking about, sir? He's like, well, uh, I'm not going to get into it. So he turned around and started talking to other people. This guy was an older guy. He had a cane. He was probably like five, five, four, you know, a little, little guy, but, you know, a little cane, a little mustache, trucker hat. And then he got called into the back. And then I was like probably third to last that got called to the back. And I was like, man, what's, what's, you know, this is, I never been through this, but yeah, what's happening. So there was a person that came out and, and called my name and I got up. Yeah, that's me. She's like, follow me. 
So t- she took me to the back, right? And it was a hallway. And she opened this door that looked like it, it, it was, it looked like bookshelves. So it looked like a hidden, it, it's like a hidden door, but right behind a desk. So she's like, we need you to follow me. So she opened this, this door that opens up and I went behind, behind her and that door closed and we went down these, these stairs that had these lights that went to the sides. Right. And I'm like, what the hell is this? What is this? What is this? She's like, don't worry. Just follow me. They need to talk to you. So we went down. We started going down the stairs like at least three minutes going down the stairs. And these stairs, these stairs were like, like half a feet. So I'm estimating we probably went down like four floors of height of, of, you know, four floors. So she goes to another door and the door has like, um, a beautiful blue light outlining the door. You know, I guess it's not for you to bump your head or nothing like that. She, she taps twice. She hits it like, like she hit it twice and the door open and she's like, okay, they're waiting for you. Cool. And when I go in there, I see, I see the older guy with the cane. I see five other people that are old, was older as well. I see, I think there was a total of like 20, 22, 23 people in line on this green, green line. And they were lined up and they told me to stand there. And and then I look at the, the older guy and he's like, I knew you were involved. He looked at me. He's like, I knew you were involved with this, with this. And, and I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? How, uh, how you know I was involved? He's like, I knew by the way you were and by the way you were coming in, I knew that you were involved in all this. And then he grabs his cane and he hits my knee with the cane. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, don't worry, man. You're going to love this. I'm like, what the heck is going on with this guy? And then all the other older guys, they started laughing. Because they know they know this particular guy. So I guess I was uh, the new person there, I guess. Uh, so we were standing in line, and there was another guy that came in. I think he was an officer, a high-ranking officer. I guess he was retired as well. He came in, in, in CVs. And he comes out and says, so... I don't know. Some of you guys know why the reason you guys are here. And some of you guys don't know the reason why you're here. Some of you guys are retired. Some are you some some of you guys are in the service still. And I'm like I talked to the other guy. Um the older guy and I said, "What what is this for?" And he hits me with a cane. He says, "Just listen." I'm like, okay. <laughs> so he, he, he kept talking. And he said, there's going to be a mission. And we want you guys. We, we want to know if you guys want to do it. So the guy with the cane, he says, I'll do it. And then I said, hey, if he does it, I'll do it too. I don't know what the heck is going to be or what type of mission it is. And then he didn't say particularly like a mission. He said like a, a task. There's a task that we need you guys to do. And it's like uh, something to do with taking a particular area and making sure this area has the proper um, devices connected to it. So he was explaining that we were going to go to a place that had ETs or, you know, biological entities. 
and that they needed people with past experiences that to go to this particular area. And the older guy, he was like, oh, so uh, wh where is this area at? And the officer was like, uh, we can't tell you now, but we'll, we'll text you or we'll give you some information of how this is going to go down and where this is going to be. Some other six guys raised their hands and the other ones, um, they did not want to do it. They said, no, we don't want no more of this. And we don't want nothing to do with this no more. So they dismissed these other guys. So six other guys and the older guy and me, we decided to do this particular task or this particular mission. So they said that they were going to text us and tell us when or when, where, and why. And they were going to give us more information about this particular mission. And that's it. We 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 got back in line, and it now is different. It's not like you're they're telling you what to do. It's you you decide if you want to do it or not. So I guess they they call the same people back to see if they want to do these particular missions or particular tasks. If you don't want to do it, you just walk out, and that's it. It's a regular day for you. Um, you do your blood work, and you go back home, or you do whatever you need to do in the VA. Um, I don't know what other VA office are going through this, but this particular one, they do this. So it, it's quite, it's quite interesting that experience. And we, w I went back up the stairs, back to this office, back out, came back in. And that was it. Um, I went out and I saw the older guy. He went like this to me. Uh, the other six guys, they didn't talk to me as much. They just left the VA. And they were leaving um, certain different times. You know, I started walking out with a, the guy with a cane. And I said, how long have you been doing? You, you, you've been going through these experiences or going through these certain things. He says, man, longer than when you were alive. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I guess he's been doing this since longer since I was, you know, born. Uh, I'm, I'm only, yeah. So I assume then, I mean, this is at the Veterans Affairs and you, you describe a process here, like as a screening process, you're in one waiting room and that's just open for all veterans. And, and then you get called in, you go down the stairs and you lined up. And now this is the 20 veterans who are people who have been operatives in the past and they're being asked if they want to volunteer for a new upcoming mission. And you described a range of ages, some older than you, and, and some were still active. Um, so now I'm assuming that these guys, these 20 guys, I mean, they still must be reasonably fit. You know, one, you know, you're walking down four flights of stairs and also you're being asked to volunteer for, for missions that might have some difficulty in them. So, I mean, how did the, how did the, you know, how did the health of those other 20 people look to you? I mean, you mentioned the one short guy with a cane, but he, he sounded like he could still get around, but yeah, you want to just talk a little more about how, how they looked. I mean, are these guys that could really do a, a kind of mission that you were doing that you've been describing while you were active, or are we talking about like something much easier? Sorry about that. There was, uh, I was looking at every guy, right? And there's a couple guys fit like me. There was a guy, a couple fit for, you know, there was fit, but I guess they send people with knowledge of these particular places with you, right? Yeah, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from. You know, I, I don't want to be carrying 
a person if if something goes south, you know, or. But I guess this particular person that they leave in charge, I think would be the person with the cane or the older people that they leave in charge. I think they're in charge of to tell us where to go or how to do it and how where the place is. I guess we're going to be in communication uh, with these people that have more knowledge of these particular places and all that. So, yeah. Okay, now you mentioned this officer that was in civilian clothes that was asking for volunteers and saying that th there would be a task. And you, he, he, did he say something about kind of like um, non-human or extraterrestrial entities? I mean, what, what do you recall him saying about that and, and how that was related to the task? Can you repeat that? I cannot hear you. Oh, what did the officer say about the extraterrestrial element in the task he was asking you guys to volunteer for? He did not say as much. It was more like to see if we wanted to do it. But he explained that there's going to be ETs and biological living entities there. So I guess us not to be surprised if we do see anything like that. So something that is normal for us to see, not that other civilian people or other people haven't seen before. So th this means that uh, you, when that mission or that task is ready to be uh, completed or begun, that you, you'll just get like a text message saying, you know, show up at this place at this time, and you just do that? Yeah, yeah. We show up when we... If we need to do it, we do it. Okay, all right. Um, so, it it can you ex well, you know now now you're officially retired, right? So as as you said before your retirement, you had to do these missions. You were expected to do them. Now it's it's entirely voluntary. Voluntary. Um, have you been told anything about? You know, what kind of future missions you might be expected to be a part of? Yeah, they they told me that there's going to be some missions that I was going to be involved still just to be like a guide type of person. They say that certain missions, they're going to need me. And that they will pick me up and there's no say or why I can't deny it or nothing that they will pick me up and I ha I will have to go to these type of missions because of my past experience and what I know. You know, I don't know if people understand, but in between these missions, there's more, a lot more details that, that happens that I can't really talk about. You know, I, you know, I tell you the surface of the water, you know, but I, I, I can't tell you sometimes the how how deep sometimes the water is or what's in the deep side of the water that we go through in these experience. You know, um, maybe later on on these missions that I have been telling you. There's certain things that I wasn't allowed to say that I think I'm going to be able to say on these missions that we went to. And I understand that there's going to be people there that they're going to want to know, you know, if I served or if I been on these particular missions and all that. And I know you got all the documents. Um, it's going to be in the third book. The documents of what I serve in the military. And 
it, it's hard. I guess it's hard for us to to go through these experiences. It's hard for us to you know talk about these experiences sometimes. You know, it, it, you know, as we talk a couple couple of days ago I went to a a grocery store in the parking lot and I heard a big beeping noise on my right side of the ear. And when I turned my head, I looked at a car and there was a guy dressed in black and he was facing a device towards me. And that device was making me hear like a high pitched sound. And, you know, sometimes I do uh, get scared if they disrupt or they get rid of these memories I have. You know, the technology is out there. Or out of nowhere, um, they pick me up and I disappear, you know. So that is behind my my the back of my head. You know, what happens if, you know, an orb comes out of nowhere and disappears me, you know. So I want people to understand that People that go through these missions and people that start talking about these missions. Sometimes they do get in trouble sometimes, you know, Doc? Yep, I understand that there are elements that are part of the national security system that wants you to be part of these missions, but there's another element that is not supportive, especially of you, because you're talking to me and your updates are going public, that there's a faction that doesn't want that. And we've talked about that for years now, that there's there's white hats oh, yeah, giving you information, giving you the green light, and there are black hats that are trying to stop you and intimidate you, harass you. And as you said, there's, you know, using all sorts of psychotronic uh, weapons against you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I'm forgetting a lot of things now. Like today, heading out to the gym, I forgot my wallet and my phone. I'm forgetting uh, certain simple tasks. And sometimes pronunciation is getting tougher for me. So they're going to run a couple tests of what maybe it's happening to me or something like that and i'll keep everybody posted on that but uh now is 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 uh i'm feeling the effects now that i'm out more i'm forgetting more stuff it, it's it's being tough on me so you know i want to apologize if i can't express myself or or talk the right way sometimes you know but I think that's happening now, Doc. Mm. Um, and, and that happens, I guess, to a lot of people that have been going mm. through these experiences. You know, they, they try to erase your thoughts or they give you <laughs> uh, a disease that you stop remembering and you just forget things. I just wanted to ask you uh, one, one final question. Uh, you, you mentioned that as a... Uh, in that Veterans Affairs, uh, the 20 people were given a, a choice to volunteer to go on missions, and that's purely voluntary. But you were also told, you just said that uh, there are certain missions uh, that you're going to be expected to do, that they, these are mandatory, like you, you get, a, I guess, a phone call or a text message, be here at this time, and you have to be there. Yes, yes. Okay. So, the missions so that, that sounds I did very before, similar to when you're in the military. Yeah, the missions that I've done before, these other people, yeah, they they want me to sometimes keep going to these other missions. But anything that has to do with the with the VA or that area of civilian sector, they ask you if you want to go to these particular missions. I don't want people to think that I'm trying to contradict myself. I'm not. Um, when you're in the military right you go through these experience so they try to minimize 
to use you. But if you have information and you have knowledge of these particular places and you been doing these missions with them, they'll probably call you back to to be with these other guys and just, I guess, show them the strings of how these places were before, you know, you get let go from this other particular area meaning the military and all that but i guess the the civilian sector is different you have a choice if you want to do these tasks or these missions because of your past experience you have a choice right so remember I, I just got out the 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 30th so it's it's gonna be probably two to three years until they stop using me anymore with the military part right now you know while you were active you you had a, a senior officer that you never named that he would give you the green light is, is is he still around or is there someone else playing that role with you yes he is still around but he's in a process of doing a transition as well i see okay well very good well uh it's great that uh you were able he will to... probably be in gsic he will probably be in gsic oh wow that's even better uh, well maybe we can uh, have a meeting i want to thank him for you know being a good shepherd for you over the years and and, and kind of like green lighting you and allowing all this information to come to come out i actually i actually dedicated the book to him and the other covert military officers that have protected you and green lighted you uh for revealing these secrets i think that's very important that people are acknowledged when they've provided done a service and i think they've done a service in helping you and protecting you over the years you know both before you joined the army and uh during your service yeah you know a lot of things is because of the protection of the the national security protection of this beautiful country you know there is there is technology out there doc that we can't have that type of technology in the wrong hands because it's it's so advanced you know we we got we got stuff that can disappear people out of thin air you know it's is amazing the technology that we have and you know and people that uh i guess does wrong or does anything negative to this country they got what's coming for them you know i guess don't mess with the united states of america um if i were you <laughs> you know uh, you know i'm just putting that out there because we have things that can yeah it, it's 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 no joke we can't have this in the wrong hands so yeah well, well, great. Uh, thank you, JP, for that uh, update. And for those um, that are interested in learning more about JP's uh, recent, more recent missions, uh, the third book in the series, U.S. Army Insider Missions, is now out, Nordic ET, Space Arcs and Saturn. So you can get the paperback version in at, at Amazon and also lulu.com. And there is also the Kindle version, electronic, that is available at the moment uh, on Amazon. And we are we are planning to do an audiobook version, but that'll be in the future. So I want to thank you, JP, for being on Exo Politics today again. No problem. My pleasure, Doc. It's always good to be here and bring this beautiful information to the public that don't know and don't understand this particular of things that happen in the background. You know, I think it's important to bring this information out. And I know soon, you know, there's a lot of things that it's going to be coming out. I know, I know I've been saying that for a long time, but there's going to be a lot more information about different dimensions and how these beings instead of coming here in ships maybe they come here through a different way you know there's going to be a lot of information coming out soon of how all these things happen and different realms and yeah it's going to be exciting times it's going to get better a lot of information is coming out technology is advancing so i want people to get ready of what's coming so we have to be in a positive vibration, positive mindset, 
and make sure that we share the love. That's the most important thing. Have that love vibration and help others understand what's really happening in this beautiful world that we live in and this universe. Well, thank you, JP, and especially for your for your service to your country. Roger. JP out. You have been listening to ExoPolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com. Thank you.